Hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe! Thisbe! Ah, oh, Pyramus, lover dear, thy Thisbe dear and lady dear. Let me play the lion too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, Let him roar again! Let him roar again! I grant you, friends, if you should frighten the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I, I will aggravate my voice and I will roar you as gently. I will roar you, and twere any nightingale. I'm Larry Lucky Do here, interviewing the wonderful and lovely Nathan Bliss. I'm here in the Joan C. Edwards Performing Arts Center in the green room in the back of the building, interviewing my friend Nathan about success. So, uh, Nathan, to start, I think the first question that everybody, uh, you know, that we should ask is, uh, what, what's your definition of success? Success. Success has two qualities, I think. I think if you have accomplished your goals and you are happy, then you are successful. Set a goal, achieve it. If you achieve it and you're not happy, you might want to reassess your goals. Um... Who, at a young age, who inspired you? Who were who inspired you? Who who lit the flame in your heart, so to speak? Um, I think my brother did that. Um, my brother's a very special person. He's mentally handicapped, and he is the funniest person I know in the whole wide world. What kind of struggles or obstacles have you had to overcome in your life? Um. So many. <laughs> uh, getting out of bed's a real hard one. Uh, my bed's really comfy. Um, oh, geez. I mean, every day is a struggle, and I feel that that is what life is all about, is overcoming that struggle. So I say bring on the conflict, bring on the struggles. I'll take it. We'll see what we can do with it. I mean, it. that right there is success itself, being able to get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um... What lessons has your work here in the theater taught you about life? Oh, I'd actually like to reverse that question and oh. say what life <laughs> lessons have helped me on stage because, you know, sometimes when you're an actor, you forget that you're trying to be real and not perform. Mm -hmm. And outside of the theater, there's all kinds of real shit going on. So I take the real things and the real things I feel outside of the theater and try and help them, try and have those things inspire me on stage. Um, how did your, your upbringing and your childhood affect your, uh, affect your life? And uh, we'll just, we'll go from there and I think I'll add on to the question. Um, well, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> How did your uh, upbringing play a, uh, your upbringing, your childhood play, play a role in your you know life and your success? Well, uh, my parents and my brother and I lived in the middle of nowhere. We had no neighbors. Um, we were the caretakers to a very wealthy woman, and we cut her grass and cleaned her house and swept the pool and, you know, trimmed her hedges and stuff. And she took very good care of, care of us. She's a very wonderful woman. Um, I had a TV with only three channels on it. Mm. So I didn't watch much TV, um, which now in life, I feel really out of the loop because I still don't watch a lot of TV. It's not in my, like, my habits. I'll watch a movie every once in a while, watch some Netflix, but... You know, as an actor, there's all these actors that know all the names of all the celebrities and, you know, oh, did you see this movie? And I'm like, no, I really didn't see it. <laughs> you know, and they're like, you remind me of this actor. And I'm like, that's great. I have I no idea who he is. I have no idea who you're talking about. But, you know, it's just, I was brought up in a very family-oriented environment. We hung out, we played games, we worked together, you know, um, so we weren't like a sit around the TV kind of family. Yeah. We were a, let's go outside and chop down a tree or 
work, <laughs> sort of. Uh, but now I hate doing stuff like that just because I did it so much as a mm-hmm. child, you know. Um, how did you get How did you get started in the theater? Uh, well, my dad tried to get me to play basketball. I hated it. My dad tried to get me to play football. I hated it. Soccer, hockey, tennis, everything. I went to so many different practices as a child. I went to dance practice. I hated it. I went to piano lessons. I hated it. I tried out for the Music Man when I was 10 years old. I got cast as Winthrop Peru, and I've never left the stage since that day. I've been acting ever since then. I guess I just, I guess it just took me a little while to find my niche. Mm. Um, in our class, and I know this really heavily applies to uh, theater in specific, we discussed uh, what, what uh, people like to refu- refer to as the 10,000 hour rule, which is the idea that one person has to put 10,000 hours of work or practice or study to truly become successful uh, with something. Um, would you like to elaborate on that uh, some? Well, I don't know about 10,000 hours because somebody could put one hour's worth of work in and do it half-assed <laughs> and then somebody else could come to an hour-long rehearsal and work their butt off and get something. So I guess what I'm saying, it depends on how hard you work in those 10,000 hours if that will make you successful. Um, we're just going to cut that out. <laughs> Okay, here's a good one for you. The uh, a question that our um, our professor really wanted us to stress was that uh, from the beginning of time, storytelling has been used to transmit history and culture, um, entertainment, teaching lessons, storytelling, and what kind of role has storytelling played in your personal or your professional life? Um, the other day, somebody asked me what my favorite play was, and I happened to be wearing a shirt that said. The whole world's a stage, and I'm a major player, which is a quote from Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. My favorite story is the story that goes on in life. And all these other things that we do are just kind of little stories that put it together. So I guess, you know, storytelling is real. We're in the story right now. I'm, you know, this is just a chapter in the book. This might be a paragraph, this little interview we're doing. But, you know, you know, next chapter I might be at rehearsal or, you know, at home relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what words of wisdom or advice could you offer uh, to the viewers at home on how to create a successful life or how to be successful? <sighs> do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. Very profound words. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're coming to a close on our interview. Um, is there is there anything that I haven't asked you that you'd like to share to share with us, or any any final words? Um, let me think. Yeah, there's probably something I should say. Um, <laughs> you know, I. Uh, you know, we were talking about struggles and stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily believe in karma, but, you know, when I was a child, I had a lot of struggles. I went through some real-life shit as a child. Am I allowed to say shit? I don't know. Well, <laughs> it's in there. Get with it. All right, uh, so, so you went through some real-life troubles when you were a really, child. really, really, really things that children shouldn't go through as a child happened to me. And, you know, I, back... You know, when I was a kid and all that stuff was over, I hated it. I was so mad at the universe or God or whatever for doing that to me. But when I look now as a 22-year-old, I look back and I thank God for that because it's it's taken a lot out of me, a lot of the bad things out of me, and it's made me realize that there are good things in this world. And, you know, so many times, so many people... They get down, and they focus on those bad things, but uh, the good things come. The good things come. Well, thank you very much, uh, Nathan Bliss. My hand is in the shot there. No problem. What a beautiful hand. Oh, thank you. You're not so bad yourself. Yeah, well, you know. So um, I think that's it.